feels like a better one. There we go. It's a black. Not a giant, but a decent fish. Not a giant, but a decent fish. He was in 50 foot of water, over 90 on the main lake in, oh, I don't know, 25 mile an hour winds. Sound like a fun way to catch fish. We'll get him back in before he gets blown up. Down he goes. Hey guys, Eric Prey, Table Rock Fishing Intel. Gonna go over the Jewel Scuba Spoon with you today. Gonna show you some of the versatility of this bait, how we catch them on Table Rock. It's windy, it's December. We're gonna fish deep, we're gonna fish it vertically. We'll show you how to catch them horizontally. We'll show you how to pitch docks with it. Some of the different things we do with the spoon, plus go into some of the detail of what makes it so much better than just a hunk of lead with a hook on it. So today we're vertical fishing with the scuba spoon and a couple of different, it's not really retrieves, I guess it's presentation is the best way to put it, is we will, you know, it's a traditional way of working a, a jigging spoon where you're just jigging it up and down. Um, you know, and we do that quite a bit. One of the keys when you're jigging it up and down is when that bait's falling is you want to follow it. Oh, I got one looking at me. You want to follow that bait down with the rod tip. See, I'm not letting it fall on its own. I'm actually following it down so it's on a semi-slack line. It still has the same presentation I want, but if one should hit it on the way down, I'm gonna feel that bite. So it's very important when you're jigging a spoon that you follow the, the bait down with your rod tip so you don't lose contact with the bait. Keep it on a semi-slack line. Another technique that we use a lot, especially in the winter time, is we'll just shake the bait. And I'm just sitting here just barely shaking it, moving the rod tip maybe two or three inches at most, and I'm just shaking it. And that tends to work when, when the fish are a little bit skittish or they're not being super aggressive. So like right now, I've just pulled two fish out of this tree. I switched from jigging the bait up and down to now I'm just shaking it and they're coming up to take a look at it. There we go. There's one. That feels like a chunky dude. Well, not nearly as big as he's acting, but he's a fish. Good lord, fish. Not a big fish, but he's a fish. He sure as heck felt a lot bigger coming out of 25 foot of water. All right, let's put him back and go get another one. So guys, let's talk about the Jewel Scuba Spoon itself. We'll go through some of the details, the colors, and everything else. As far as colors are concerned, first off, you've got white, which is our most common color. It's the color that everybody uses on Table Rock. The next one is the Chartreuse Shad, which is kind of a green chartreuse color. And then you've got Lavender Shad. Anybody who used to fish the Lavender Shad spinnerbait on Table Rock knows all about how good Lavender Shad is on Table Rock. And then you've got the basic chrome. Even though it's a chrome spoon, it still has the detail, it still has a scale pattern and the little dot on there like a shad. All of the spoons come in a one ounce. They don't make any other sizes. But the thing about it is, even though it's one ounce, it's not a big spoon. The weight's distributed, it's balanced, so it's not a big spoon. It's the size that most of the shad are here on Table Rock. They come with a heavy duty split ring on them, so it's not gonna pull open, it's not gonna rip out. And then they all come with a must add ultra grip hook on them, which is great. That hook penetrates, it, uh, the point of the hook does not get dull like some of the you know, chemically sharpened hooks. This has the ultra point hook and it's the triple grip, so it's more of a extra wide gap hook so you don't lose fish. It does not come unhooked. All in all, all the spoons work on Table Rock. Like I said, the number one spoon on Table Rock is gonna be the white one. That's the one we use more times than any other, any other time of the year. Doesn't matter, that's our number one spoon. But that gives you a little bit more detail on the spoon itself. There he is. I don't think he's a big fish, but he's a fish. No, he's not a big fish. He's a giant bluegill. <laughs> oh, 
okay, he's not what we're looking for, but he is a big bluegill. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> good night. <laughs> That's a, that's a chunky bluegill. All right, we'll put him back in. We'll see if we get a bass down there. And I'm fishing this tree line. These fish are suspended in the top of the tree. Tree here, tree here, another one there. These are all fish that are suspended in the top of these trees. There's a tree here, another one there, and another one there. We're fading off of it a little bit because we're drifting. But that's all fish right there. All of that, oops, all of that right there is a school of fish. Fish on. Come on, baby, stay down. There we go. Decent little Kentucky. Right in the corner of the mouth, right where he's supposed to be hooked. So as far as the rod and reel combo I like to use for this, I use a seven foot one medium heavy action rod. Um, I like it to be, have a soft tip on it so I don't lose fish when they start making that last run throughout the day. I do use a high speed reel. I'm using an eight three to one reel on this. Reason being, a lot of times you'll set the hook on those fish and they'll come straight up. So you want to be able to get that line in, get that fish in, keep tension on him as fast as possible. And then I always use fluorocarbon. I'm using uh, 12 pound fluorocarbon right now. It's a Sunline 12 pound fluorocarbon. Anything 12, 14 is going to be sufficient for doing this. I don't like using a lot heavier line unless I'm actually, you know, spoon jacking or, or pitching around docks because then you're going to wind up getting into some cover underneath the, underneath the docks. If you use too heavy of a line, it will affect the way the spoon falls. So 12 to 14 when you're fishing vertically or casting it, throwing it horizontally, seems to be the best way to line the throw. So this is one more way that you can fish this jewel scuba spoon, especially on clear water lakes like Table Rock. We'll get on these bigger docks, these long docks that are out over 30, 40, 50, 60 feet deep. And we'll use a live scope and we'll look underneath the dock and see if we see any fish under there. And then we'll pitch it just like you're pitching a jig and work it back in. It's easier when you have an open slip like I have right here to do, but you can pitch it just like you would a jig around, around some of the boat lifts and around some of the boats. And we're just gonna give it a shot and see if we can find one spend a lot more time looking doing this than we do actually fishing it. But I do see some shad and it looks like a couple of fish in this open stall right here. So we'll pitch her back in there, let it sink a little bit and then just kind of work it back. Oop, there's a little slap right there. That might have been a crappie. Nope, that's not a crappie. Not a big fish, but it's a fish. It is a crappie. Or you can catch a crappie. <laughs> it's a pretty good crappie. So guys, I hope that helps you better understand how to fish the jewel scuba spoon, whether you're fishing it vertically, fishing horizontally, pitching around docks, and maybe even pick up a trick or two how to catch fish, how to catch more fish using the jewel scuba spoon. Remember when you're ordering or you're looking to find your jewel scuba spoons, the best place to get them is jewelbait.com. They've got them in stock. If you order more than $50, you get free shipping. So go to jewelbait.com. That's where you're going to get your jewel scuba spoons. Don't forget to check out the fish tools box as well. It is a great way to get bait sent to your door every month. Baits that catch fish all over the country. Check out fish tools. Check out jewelbait.com. This is Eric Prey with Table Rock Fishing Intel.